at your weakest. In fear and doubt are a burden too heavy to bear. Remember this. You are not alone. Okay. Yo, guys. Yo, yo, guys. The game is funny. Funny. The price is funny. Um, funny. Um, the game is funny. Um, just, I'm going to pre order right now on basis. I'm going to pre order it. And basically, it's um, Sonic Edition. Basically, it's like um, Pop Edition and um, other. And Moon Edition is like basically that. Um, it's, it's amazing. It's just really like amazing right now. Basically, it's two editions right now. And basically, you know, I can't really show you, but I really know. Basically, I don't the first one is about like um, the price of around um, 17, 17 pounds. Seventeen pounds, and the price, and all the price around eighty. I think it's about eighty pounds or something like that. When eighty, yeah, eighty pounds or something like that. But I really don't know what the first one is. But yeah, that's that's basically it. That's uh, that's what I was gonna say. Like um, I don't know what the basic that the third edition like about the full game, and the third. And plus an other edition is on the, like the whole set, basically whole set of edition. Like I don't even know. Yo, yo, it makes the block right now. I would say right now is like, whoo! The game is finally released. Finally released. I just like pre-ordered. I just made legit just free field right now and basically that and I can't really really win this game to actually actually delete that basically comes basically actually me comes right now because I'm just for real I'm so really really happy in this game so really happy in this game you want me to play this game on live let, let me know or you want to play this game on my next YouTube because I've been um, playing the game on my next YouTube my game channel as well called Biggest called Biggest Games Biggest Games don't forget that guys please guys find right there you know you, you don't really know I put in the link as well I'll be show you guys of this I'll put it on this on the bottom page right now because like this I can't wait in this game to come. For real guys, I can't wait this week this game to come because Pre orders it's gonna be epic man, you're gonna be epic man. You be you gonna be epic man. Trust me, you I think you'll be epic. Yeah, I think you'll be epic. Come on. For real. For God of War Ragnarok are officially live, which means we finally have details on the pricings of the four different editions of the game. And while we didn't get any new footage or gameplay yet, there's still more exciting details that people have discovered from that collector's edition unboxing. So let's go over those finds too. If you're excited for Ragnarok, then a like on the video would really help us out and let's go. So in case you're not aware, there's four different editions of God of War Ragnarok that are available for pre-order now. We went in detail on the contents of each edition in a previous video, we'll link to that at the end of this one, but yeah, no surprises when it comes to the pricing. Yeah, that's the price of the, um, the more one, the base price of that, that more price, this one, and the base of that more price of the regular edition of the game. Although it is worth noting that the PS5 version is of course more expensive. Of God of War. 
Trust me, guy. I'm a huge fan of God of War. Just probably a huge fan of God of War, man. Trust me, guy. I'm telling you. I'm just wish you know, that. I just wish that, man. Because I'm a huge fan of God of War, man. Huge fan. Because I'm playing like 1, 2, and 3 of God of War. I played in this one, my other ones. I like, show you what it should like basically um, go to war with the fourth one. The fourth one that did play. That that one that one gave me um high top was play that like, I think I was playing that around the um, probably like two thousand eighteen or two thousand and seventeen. Somewhere in that. That's why I'm saying like go to war playing that playing that one. I actually was going to play and it, it was so definitely epic I can't wait to the game got released I would ban this game out because it coming like off of my birthday it actually come off of my birthday when I turned 4 like basically when I turned 5 right like basically when I turned 5 I would get some more sleep get like more parties when I turned 5 then, then tomorrow, I'll play this game off of my birthday and that show of my li basically life on life right there. Then show up my bank account when I go on like this and that and playing the games throughout. I'm playing live in this basically on my account and then playing live in this account and then playing. Um, basically, um, Playing my other accounts, like basically doing like stories or all that. I do all this, and then guys, you want me to play live? You love my live, my live games? Please, guys, show up up for my birthday because like on the night, on the night, my day is morning or early. Might be morning around ten or eleven. Because um, I don't know how, they, uh, how, how many days. I do know how many days come out of my birthday. Of that, I'll show you guys. Don't forget. I'm going to live to. I'm going to live after the game drop. Off of my birthday. And that. Yeah, I'm going to live off my birthday. My, my birthday like of November 8th. And then really soon. And before the game does it come in November 9th. I can't just wait for real. I really, really cannot wait for this game to drop. Guys, I'm telling you, wow. This, wow. Expensive than the PS4 version as you're effectively paying for the $10 upgrade up. Yeah, this, yeah, basically, this 10, this 10 pound more different. You think more 10 pound more different? Yeah, that means more 10. I mean, if you bought the latest one, that's okay. You don't need ten pounds. Just put it up there, and then that's it. Just tell me the ten pound off different, but I bought just the one. And that's fine. Do it, guys. Just do it. Don't buy the more version. Don't get the better version, the new one version. Like all that. Basically, that that is more better. That that is suck. That one game. This and that. Just save all this and then get the game. We've got, we've got like lots and a lot of weeks. So it's got a lot of days and weeks. And next one to buy this game as well. Basically, ten more different, like ten pounds, like more different. And it's great. Bro. And of course, no matter what version you pre-order, you will get that Risen Snow armor for Kratos and Atreus. The digital deluxe will cost you ninety euros in the PlayStation Store, but it does give and Atreus. The digital deluxe will cost you 90 euros in the this, this, this. this basically uh, this one right here do not get this the fine one get this basically just 10 pounds that be 10 pounds off the difference basically 10 pounds off the difference because like basically you get all this you get this one okay that'd be good that's alright, but you get this one that is more better than you get all this and we go ahead and what in there. What in there, like, for real, is actually really good. PlayStation Store, but it does give you a lot of extra digital goodies. And by the way, prices. Look at the goodies, right now. Euros in the PlayStation Store, but it does give you a. Check it out, man. Let's just check it out quickly. Let's check it out quickly. 
Atreus. The Digital Deluxe will cost you 90 euros in the PlayStation Store, but it does give you a lot of Extra digital goodies. And by the way, prices will be in euros as at the moment of recording, pre orders for the US weren't live yet. Of course, details on the regular and digital deluxe versions aren't that interesting as the one we were all waiting for are the Collectors and Yotnar editions. The Collectors edition, the least expensive of the two, clocks in at about 215 euros, and the extra fancy Yotnar edition will cost you about 270 euros. We did have Wario64 on Twitter saying that the collector's edition will sell for $200 in the US and the Jotnar for $260, so a little bit cheaper than over here in Europe. And best of luck to all of you if you're still trying to get your pre-orders in, as especially the Jotnar edition was pretty hard to get a hold of. One final note, if you're still debating on whether to get the PS4 or PS5 version, we do know what enhancements the latter will have. Retail pages note that 3D audio, haptic feedback and adaptive triggers are all being utilized as well as general graphical enhancements. But most importantly, we know the game will have two different graphics modes to pick from. One at full 4K resolution running at 30 frames per second and one performance focused mode with dynamic resolution upscaled to 4K which runs at 60 frames per second. And while we're still waiting for the big news drop with hopefully a new gameplay trailer, we do actually have some more info about Ragnarok thanks to the content of the collector's edition again. Jordan actually spotted this but the cover of the vinyl that's included with the Jotnar edition actually shows two characters, very likely Atreus and Anker Boda, running through Jotunheim. And maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I think it's very interesting that the two overlapping handprints kind of create the shape of a heart. But the biggest source of new information we currently have is still the map of all the different realms, as a lot of new interesting details have been discovered. We have this runic text in the top left of the map that seems like a bit of world building at first glance, but after thinking about it some more, I actually think it reveals a key detail detail about realm travel in God of War Ragnarok. We'll leave a link to the full translation in the video description, but the line I want to focus on is this one. None save the gods have been able to chart our strange geography, but among mortals few can boast the expertise enjoyed by the Huldra brothers whose ability to navigate and traverse the realms rivals even that of Odin Allfather. So while this was already established a bit in the first game, this confirms that apart from the gods, the Huldra brothers Brock and Sindri are the experts when it comes to the art of realm travel. And with the Lake of the Nine frozen and our Bifrost crystal gone, we are in dire need of a new way to travel the realms and it sounds like our old blacksmith friends will be the perfect dwarves to help us out with that. In fact, I think their home in Svartalfheim might function as our new realm travel room as we can see tree roots that look suspiciously like Yggdrasil in the background. Although if I'm being honest, I hope we no longer need a realm travel room and are just able to fast travel from realm to realm so fingers crossed Brock and Sindri can help us out with that too. There's also some smaller details on the map that reveal more about some of the creatures and characters we'll be meeting in the different realms. Sireman on Reddit spotted a little squirrel on the roots of Yggdrasil, which is of course Rattle Tosker. He was already a summon for Atreus in God of War 2018, and we know he is returning for Ragnarok as voice actor Sung Won Cho confirmed he provided the voice on Twitter. I am curious about the little hut he's sitting next to and whether or not that will be a place for us to visit too. But the most interesting finds were made by YouTubers Captain Q and John Ford. We'll link to both of their channels in the video description, but they've taken a closer look at Asgard in particular and noticed some very interesting details. Cuba noted the nine winged figures in the background, speculating those could be the nine Valkyries that Kratos saved during the first game. And yeah, Sigrun says she is in our depth and I can't imagine her being particularly happy with Odin after what happened. So I can totally see these shapes representing the nine Valkyries assaulting the Aesir. John also made a case for dragons returning to help us out thanks to the giant dragon silhouette next to Asgard. And if you're thinking this is all circumstantial evidence, he also pointed out that the three dragon symbols on the map that came with the God of War 2018 collector's edition were in the exact same spot as the dragons you would find in the game, which lends a lot more meaning to pretty much everything on this new map. To me, this almost sounds like
like Santa Monica is setting Kratos up for an endgame moment where all our allies like the Valkyries, the dragons we freed, maybe even Jormungandr will show up for an epic final battle. Another person we might see play a part in that epic finale is Freya's brother Freyr. The collector's edition comes with two carved figures of the Vanir twins and the only reference to this I could find was the Vanir goddess Freya and her twin brother Freyr. Freyr has been established in the lore of God of War already with Mimir saying he has a long history with the elves making it very likely that we will encounter him on our return to Alfheim. Whether or not he'll be an ally or an enemy remains to be seen. With him being a Vanir he's probably holding a grudge against Asgard so he might want to help us fight Odin and his army but with his twin sister being pretty pissed at Kratos he might take her side and fight us instead. Dragon symbols on the map that came with the God of War 2018 Collector's Edition were in the exact same spots as the dragons you would find in the game. Which lends a lot more meaning to pretty much everything on this new map. To me, this almost sounds like Santa Monica is setting Kratos up for an endgame moment where all our allies like the Valkyries, the dragons we freed, maybe even Jormungandr will show up for an epic final battle. Another person we might see play a part in that epic finale is Freya's brother Freyr. The collector's edition comes with two carved figures of the Vanir twins and the only reference to this I could find was the Vanir goddess Freya and her twin brother Freyr. Freyr has been established in the lore of God of War already with Mimir saying he has a lot
long history with the elves, making it very likely that we will encounter him on our return to Alfheim. Whether or not he'll be an ally or an enemy remains to be seen. With him being a Vanir, he's probably holding a grudge against Asgard, so he might want to help us fight Odin and his army, but with his twin sister being pretty pissed at Kratos, he might take her side and fight us. Being a Vanir, he's probably holding a grudge against Asgard, so he might want to help us fight Odin and his army, but with his twin sister being pretty pissed at Kratos, he might take her side and fight us instead. And on the note of Odin, while we still know very little about the king of Asgard, we did learn a little bit more about his design thanks to art director Raf Grissetti over on Instagram. When someone asked him what the hardest character was to design, Raf replied with Odin, adding that he worked on it for a long time and that he can't wait for people to see it. So, sounds like Santa Monica sure to all the time and effort needed to make sure that this important character looks as interesting and unique as he sounds in the lore. And as soon as we hear more about the game, we will of course report on it here, so subscribe to miss nothing, leave a like if you like the video, and if you want, you can watch that previous video I mentioned with more details we found in the collector's edition unboxing. I'll see you in the next one, goodbye! Welcome to Ray. Basically, that that's the part of the reason. Because I really don't know if she has she has twin blood. And I'm here to give you a twin sister. But what sister? I don't know if the sister will be on the part. I'm going to see the two parts.